Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, General Lyons, I, I noted your concern about the movement of of personal items and one of volunteers, a consultant, 50 years ago, I work for Allied Van Lines in this area, moving military families. So if you need technical assistance, it's a lot better, for example, to move a carton, to pick up a carton of lampshades than it is books. I've, I learned that the hard way. Uh, sure, anyway, I, I, I couldn't resist. You brought back a lot of memories when you talked about <laughs> moving furniture for military <clears throat> families. Uh, General Scaparati, uh, I know you touched on this, but game out for me what happens if little green men appear in Lithuania or Latvia how do we have we have we war gamed what happened in the Ukraine and Crimea to how, how do we respond it seems to me this is a real challenge for our whole deterrent posture well yes we've taken a you know we've taken a close look at, at uh, both what's happened in the past and what we think uh, could potentially happen here in the future the first thing I would say is, is that as a result of that, um, we've worked with our allies in the Baltics, Poland, Romania, Bulgaria, along the eastern border, uh, on what we've learned and also on the capabilities that we think we need as an alliance, both them and us, in order to, uh, to deter this. And our first perspective is, what do we do today to ensure that Russia fully understands uh, the commitment of Article 5 for an alliance. But the question is, how, how, what's, what's the definition of attack? It seems to me that's the, well, that's the gray area that we're in to, to know when and how to respond when it's not clear that it's, uh, tanks aren't rolling across the border. Well, that's, you, you've hit it on, I mean, the thing that I worry about most. You can continue so much, that. You hit it on the head, Senator. I like that in the record. <laughs> well, you did. Uh, the, the thing that's difficult is not necessarily an actual attack that you can see coming. It's right. actually the kind of subversive uh, undermining of, of both the nation's authority, the nation, one of the nations that they're undermining, which is what they do, and other elements of power that aren't necessarily military. The military right. would be one of the last that they want to use. Uh, so that's the most difficult. But, but we also work with our interagency to the point that uh, Senator Reid made. That's the importance of all of our elements of power here. Uh, when, you, when you can combine 29 nations with their elements of power in response to Russia's, um, it's, uh, there's no, it's a slam dunk. There's no doubt that we can handle this and they'll be deterred. But we've got to work together. A question about funding and budgets. We haven't seen a budget yet, but there's a talk that there will be a significant increase in military budget, but primarily in OCO, as opposed to line items. Give me your thoughts about having money in OCO rather than uh, allocations and authorizations that you can put to work in your in your AOR. Well. Uh Primarily, uh, those uh, budgets that come in within the base budgets itself laid out in a FIDEP uh, give me greater stability and, and knowledge of what's coming in the future. So really what we need is predictability. OCO tends to, tends to fluctuate each year. Uh, and so, you know, I, would, I, I personally underscore the, the greater predictability we have and stability in our budget as we look forward. Obviously, the more efficient we can be with our funding and the more sure that what we need in terms of force capability, readiness, et cetera, can be planned and we can deliver it. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, General Lyons, you, you mentioned in your testimony, and it's clear that a, a large part of your responsibility is met through civilian enterprises, uh, shipping air, air, airplanes. Uh, are you, and I know you talked about this, but please outline for us your level of satisfaction and confidence in the cybersecurity of the private sector partners. Sure, we acknowledge this is a uh, significant challenge. We work very closely with our industry partners. As a matter of fact, we've uh, introduced language into our contracts. We require self-assessments. We do uh, a level of analysis on that, and we work more closely to ensure that their, uh, their resiliency is improving. However, I would admit to you that uh, if an advanced persistent threat actor were on their systems today, it would be problematic. There's no question about that. And uh, fortunately, we have more. Do, uh, do you red team their systems? Self-analysis doesn't make me sleep a lot better at night. Do, do, you, do you have a red team capacity where you can uh, mock attack them to show them their vulnerabilities? No, Senator, we do not. I would urge you to consider that as an option in other areas of the government. That's been very effective. It has a way of waking people up when a skull and crossbones appears on the CEO's computer. 
Sure, I, I agree with that. Thank you, General. Thank yes, you, Mr. Chairman.